What's up everybody? Today we will release the Kremlins. Not like in the movie, but today we will talk more about the platform for chaos engineering and we'll dig deeper in something called Kremlin. Kremlin is a software as a service for chaos engineering that is top-notch platform for helping you to reach your chaos engineering practices. I'm not paid for that to give you the details. I just like the platform itself and it brings lots of fun in your environment, which you just do not need to necessarily manage, but you want to test it. So let's dig deeper. So I want to talk about the chaos engineering. Uh, I'm using basically their documentation. They have amazing pictures. They have amazing documentation. If you will look for any white papers or blogs about the chaos engineering and security related issues, about how to test your containers, how to test Kubernetes, how to use Docker, you will find it there. So I will talk about how to use chaos engineering with Kremlin in, and I will give you some showcases in AWS but it, it is not necessary in AWS. The same way and the same practices can be used anywhere you like, but AWS is, is my favorite one. So there are known unknown things that you need to plan in your scenarios. So there are things that you are aware and you are understanding them very well. You understand the behavior and the impact. For example, you know that if this service will not run, on this specific port, you will like breach your SLAs. That's a very known fact for you. And it's very easy to test it. And also there are things that you are aware, but you don't understand. So you know that, you know, if your container farm will go down and you don't know what will, what will be the impact. For example, if your backend will, for example, 50% of your backend pods will be not available. So what will happen? That are the things that you know and you understand them, but you don't know what actually happens in, in your production environment. And in unknown unknowns means basically you destroy your complete production or you destroy a complete site like a region or one availability zone because you don't know what will happen. It's very close to disaster recovery. And there are some unknown knowns that things that you understand, but you are not aware of them. So. Uh, it's really it's really good to cover all of these things and look at this metrics which, So the things that you are aware you don't understand you understand them, but you are not aware of them So these things you should be you should cover like very well in your scenario design when you are formulating your hypothesis for your cloud environment like in the cloud so let's move forward and when you will run your first experiment, and I recommend you to read the blogs, read the documentation, first thing that you will do is create a small hypothesis. So what happens if, you know, what if, what if my production system will not work? How it will affect my clients? Will for, I have, for example, mobile clients. Do I have scenario for offline work with some data? Do I store or cache some data? So you can test this hypothesis on, for example, your mobile devices. So what will happen if there is an attack from external attacker on your production environment and he will increase your latency or he will, for example, cause some issues with your DNS. So all of these things will be covered in your AWS environment or in your chaos engineering environment. And when you are planning these things, you should have rollback plan. Uh, you should also measure the impact and you should know what will happen uh, when when something bad is going on. So when something bad is going on, you need to be able to measure the details of what's up in your environment. What is the latency? What is going on? What, what basically the, the behavior that is happening in front of you? After that, and when you have the rollback plan, you can also roll back the client and I'll show you that. You should be able to harden your system and fix their issues. So if you discover some problems, you should immediately go create a plan and look how you will fix them and address them in the tested environment. And basically, first thing, you need to have fun. You need to enjoy the game. You don't need to stress yourself too much. In IT at all, you shouldn't stress yourself. Just enjoy your work, what you do, and take some time.
So now I think that it's time for demos. Working with Gremlin agent is pretty simple and I will show you how to work with that. So I prepared two instances, front and back end, and we will play with them a little bit and we will connect to the instance and play with the Kremlin agent. So let's go to the front end application with the instance ID and click on connect. So with EC2 instance connect and EC2 instance ID, you are able to connect as a root to this instance. So it takes a while and when I am in the instance, I can write Kremlin, Kremlin, check. Gremlin check. So with the Gremlin check, I am able to know and see all the informations about the agent. I can see the API response. I can see the latency in the milliseconds, and I can also see the authentication type. But I'm using the secret, the API as a response is okay, the credentials ID, and then the Docker version, the Gremlin environment variables. Uh, the files which are connected with the Kremlin, for example, the credentials or the log files, and the operating system type and the proxy setup, if there is some. Then the metadata for this instance are available for you in this check also. And what you will see in the console of Kremlin is available here too, is a cloud type, Kremlin version client, instance ID, and the operating system name it is unknown, but in our case is Amazon Linux. And also the region and public IP. If you want to check just specifically the operating system, you can write Gremlin Check OS. With Gremlin Check OS, you will get the information about the operating system. And the real attack, when I will write Gremlin, it gives you all the available choices with attack, attack container, check, help in it. You can log out from your current setup. You can roll back, roll back specific attack. You can check the status of your, of your client and also check the version. After installation, first thing that you should do with Kremlin, you should write Kremlin version. And with Kremlin version, you will know which agent version do you have. And with Kremlin attack, CPU, it will tell me that I'm launching the CPU attack for length of 60 seconds on two CPUs. That's why I'm specifying the kind of attack on the CPU, that means a resource attack with a length of 60, second, 60 seconds with the core amount of two. And it should tell us that we are not able to run or the, the test on two cores because we have only one core available and it will take 60 seconds to attack to complete. Then it will tell you that it is starting with a specific GUID, which is a unique identifier of the attack. And you should be able to see this in your console, in the attacks and in actively running attacks and also the specific IP address of your instance. So you are able to see it in your dashboard, in your Gremlin interface, and also in your client. And it basically takes 60 seconds to complete. It will be also available in your CloudWatch logs, and you will be able to know the details about your attack. And this is not the end of, of the attack, I will basically cancel this attack. You see that I reverted with the attack because I don't want to wait for the 60 seconds. And with the revert attack, you will perform the rollback. And if you are interested in the logs from your current client, you can use, I will use this sudo cat and the specific uh, file with the daemon log, which is placed here. It's in the var log kremlin daemon log. And in this log file, you have all the information from your client available. And then you see what happens there. There are like the executions, the authentication information, and all the attacks that are running here. You see here that there was executed the attack. There was some problem, the kremlin identifier, the team secret, etc., etc. So the logs are available for you here in the console.
we can check now together the console of Kremlin. Kremlin is pretty simple. It's absolutely for dummies. If you are not expert, you will have a fun with that. If you are expert, you will have a joy with that too. So you can play with the containers orchestration, with the cloud compute, with monitoring messaging databases. You can create your scenarios and your attacks. The creating the scenario basically comes out from adding new attacks, adding recent attacks, or add some status checks. You can also check your services in the full version it will work for, for that more and also have the old version of the client. With the scenarios, you can create completely new scenarios. With attacks, you create specific attacks. With schedules, you can create a scheduled attack. The clients, you see here that we have two instances. That means this front end and back end are available for us. You see that also the cloud is AWS. The Gremlin version, the image ID, so lots of different filtering metadata for us. And the reports, for example, this month we have two attacks, active clients is one, uniquely attacked targets is one, unique active users is also one. And there is the documentation and API. The API is pretty cool because if you want to develop some additional feature, if you want to use it in CI CD, if you want to execute it from your Circle CI from your AWS pipeline, you or, or your Azure DevOps, whatever platform you are using for DevSecOps, you are able to take one of these uh, calls and it will tell you how to use it, how it looks like, for example, attacks and our list of the attacks. And you can basically select here and see the response, the description, you can specify and test and all, all your API calls or all the API calls available for Kremlin. When you will try it out, it, it will work for you and it will give you the result. Because I'm not adding here the correct statements and correct correct information, it will not work. But uh, for, for the purposes of this demo, it's pretty fine. And I encourage you to do it as a homework and test it at home. Have fun with that and play with it. So from the dashboard perspective, I think that this is very clear. You see, the, you see the targets, you see that the last attack was six minutes ago, no attacks are running, the recent scenarios, I have some scenario already prepared. So when we go to scenarios, scenarios are very important for your hypothesis. When you create a hypothesis, you are defining what should happen with your production environment after a specific attack or after a specific chaos engineering scenario. So with the new scenario, you can specify my new scenario and basically put there some description, add attacks, uh, which hosts, which containers or your Kubernetes pods will be attacked. You can target all hosts, you can target specific operating systems, you can select the zones available for you in AWS, GCP or in Azure. You can select specific region, specific public IP, you can choose both or, or none of these or one. You can say, for example, percent of targets to impact. So you can say I will attack only 50% of the attacks or 50% 50, 50 of the nodes. So it will randomly select for like 50% for you. Uh, it's, it's very cool and you can also select specific tags like specific version of the client, specific IP address fees, specific instances, uh, some, some production tags or some tags which are related to a non-production environment that you want to test. And when I will go to our discard scenario, I have one already created, it's Hegocalypse. And in this I have black hole link already created for one minute and with the selected hosts like 100%. When I will click to this one, you can see here basically that there are two hosts available for this attack for black hole, black hole link and one container for me available to, to attack with all the tags and I'm running mobile security framework, which should be able to work for our purposes also well. So when I will click on new attack, I can select infrastructure one for our case. And I will say, okay, so target all the hosts, all the operating systems and all on this zone with the containers. I will also target all the containers available for me. And I can also select based on the tags, based exact one, like this one, or from the host perspective, I can say these tags, or from the exact perspective, I can say 
this host or this host will be under attack. In your case, there can be plenty and plenty of different instances for attack and for fun. So let's create one attack, again with the CPU, for the infrastructure, target all hosts, but I will select exact one. For example, this one uh, with, uh, with the IP address 34244192.23. And then I will choose Kremlin. Selecting a Kremlin means selecting an attack. So you can select resource, state or network. And it's, it's pretty easy because you can see with resource, you have CPU, disk, IO or memory. With the state, you have process killer shutdown on time travel. That means that it can change your system time. And with the network, you are affecting your network traffic. You can black hole your traffic. You can attack your DNS. You can affect your latency or you can simulate the packet loss, which is pretty great for the production grade environment with high re resilience or high requirements on low packet loss. And then you can click on the render attack. But uh, these this are not available in the free free version. So I'll again select CPU for 30 seconds, CPU capacity for 50% for one core, and I will unleash the Kremlin. So when I will unleash the Kremlin, I will see the attack details in the CPU utilization. The stage will be pending, that means that it will run. Who is the user? What kind of the attack? When it started? And here you see the start from 0 to 40 and then to 50 and then it will last for the 30 seconds. If you want to see more in your logs, here is a CloudWatch metrics. You can click on the CloudWatch metrics and it, you will be redirected exactly to the prepared dashboard in CloudWatch and see all the information or observe all the information in your CloudWatch console. This is pretty great. And with the schedules, you can schedule a new attack. You can again select the infrastructure, target or hosts, and choose Kremlin again with the with the state. For example, this in this case, or resource, uh, the I/O, how long it should work, run the attack. And basically schedule for later on only once ra randomly within time frame. That means a selected day runs per day run in the specific run window and end the test in the specific run window. So this is pretty great for specifying when, how many times, in which days you want to practice chaos engineering in your production system. Pretty great, pretty neat, pretty simple. Again, check the clients. You can select from the client, attack the host, and uh, attack this host like cloud, AWS, all the hosts or similar attacks with uh, what which you already used, which is also pretty simple. So it offers us lots of options, freedom to use, reuse the attacks, define our scenarios, change the attacks. So pretty great. And I really recommend you to try it at home or try it at your home testing lab and have fun with it. What is also uh, pretty good to showcase is the library of the attacks. So when you will go to attacks, I think that in, this, uh, in the infrastructure, in the new attacks, you should have already prepared, you can select the service or infrastructure. There is a, there, uh, there should be prepared the list of the, uh, like, ready to use, ready to use attacks. And there is here, if you will go back to dashboard to view recommended scenarios, then you have plenty of different scenarios ready to use, simulating unreliable networks, a validation of the health checks, a region eviction, or basically validate a test of TLS certificate expiration. Pretty great for your production environment. And if you are a fan of the Kubernetes like me, Kubernetes, you can filter that. And then you, you have all the tests available for you for Kubernetes test cases. So testing the storage limits, scaling, auto-scaling for Kubernetes, the CPU effects, black holing for Kubernetes, 
and, and many other attacks when correct the shutdown of the node, inject latency to the service. So the fault injection scenarios are here in the big scale. So that's it and I, I really see big future for the chaos engineering in any SRE, site reliable teams and also in the cybersecurity teams to test your environments. I think that to understand the details of CI/CD, we should play with that. So let's go to GitLab and have some fun together on how to deploy chaos engineering in the continuous process of your DevOps. So when I will go back to my pipeline and to editor, you can edit your pipeline. You can change it to whenever you like, but what I want to do in the jobs, I want to rerun specific pipeline or specific job. So I can rerun a specific kind of specific job from the CI CD. When I will go to pipelines, I can see here and download the artifacts, uh, all jobs available. So what I will do, yeah, and then you can also do the CI linting. That means that you can check your code for your CI CD if it works correctly for you. So when I will click on run pipeline, okay, and the variables, input variable file whenever you like if you have some variable file so run pipeline then it should execute our pipeline then uh, you see there there are like two different jobs available for us and the first is release the kremlins so, uh, okay first is chaos list the kremlins and second is release the kremlins you will do these activities after deployment. That means your environment is up and running, your application is deployed, and in this case, you want to chaos test or attack your environment. When we'll go to a specific job, uh, for example, to chaos list the Kremlins uh, on the running uh, job, you can see here that still our token is hidden, which is perfect, and you should do the same. It will list our our chaos testing agents with their identifiers, what kind of agent it is and where it runs. You see here also there is a mobile docker and uh, what's the status of the agent. Then you see that the job succeeded. When I will go back to jobs, there will be uh, also the last one passed, release the Kremlins. When I will go to, to this one, you see that we executed specific uh, kinds of the attacks. So when I will go to my Gremlin setup and I can check the attacks. So you see that there are no attacks already running. The CPU was one minute ago and I see here the progress of the attack. So another simple example, how to automate, how to simplify and how to run chaos experiments in your AWS on-premise or any virtual environment that you like and mostly like on your production system. Thank you so much for watching today's episode and to learn together more, I have some questions for you and some follow-up for your homework and understanding what chaos engineering is. So you should know what chaos engineering is, what it brings to you, what is the benefit and how to use Kremlin in a production environment. You should also be able to understand how to use it in your CI CD and you should be familiar with the client itself. For me, it is great for you to recommend you to go to documentation, learn more, test more, play with that, try it in GCP, try it in Azure, try it in AWS, try it in your VMs, try it in your local machine or virtual box, whenever you like to play. Just put your hands dirty and please don't forget to subscribe. So bye bye and have a nice day.